G'day, I'm Andrew Mashman. I work for one of Australia's leading distance education providers and uh, with over 3,000 distance education students behind me, I thought I'd produce a short and very rough video to give you 10 tips on what distance education students need to know to be really successful in their studies. First one of those is that, um, first tip is lecturers and students. There's lots of diversity both across the lecturers you might have in your subject for your university or private college and among students that might come from literally all over the world to study. And when you're dealing with a lecturer and when lecturers are dealing with students, they have to have a lot of empathy and they try to have as much understanding as possible about individual students and students should have try to have as much understanding as possible about individual lecturers uh, environment that they have to work in and the environment they'll be marking your papers in and the environment that they'll be communicating with you etc. So think about what your lecturer is doing and lecturers always think about what their students are doing and um, sometimes it helps to communicate the issues in your life which impact the way you study. So just think about that empathy for both lecturers and for students on that one there. The second thing which is really the most important thing you need to know about distance education is there's a thing called a study, sorry, a subject outline and the subject outline is like the Bible for your studies. It is the key piece of information. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as your learning contract, I guess. When you pay your money, you enroll in your subject, the subject outline is the thing which will give you all the information about what's expected, what you need to do, when you need to do it by, how it should be done, how it should be submitted, and what rules might kind of apply with that. Specifically, in the subject outline, you need to look for the learning objectives or the outcomes that a subject is aiming to achieve for you. It doesn't matter if it's undergraduate or master's education, there is always a set of objectives or outcomes which are required or wanted for you to pass the subject. At the end of the day, this is the stuff you're going to be assessed on, and so focus heavily on that and know what that is from day one when you start the subject. The second one is the schedule of what's going on, and there'll usually be some kind of weekly format of activities, readings, research, assessments, a whole bunch of things. Have a look through that really early on, first week or first time you get your subject outline. Check it against your own diary to say, hey, whoops, got a clash coming up here, know something's going on here. Work out how you can fit it in with work, travel, family commitments, all the things that you might have going on. If it's on there and you've got a clash, get in early and make arrangements to have some flexibility around that date. With lecturers, the minute you've left it to the last minute or past the due date, you're usually in, in dire straits and you're usually not going to get the kind of sympathy you need to have. The third one there is the subject outline also has the assessments, the things that you're going to be assessed on to see your proficiency, your mastery, your demonstrated understanding of what's happened in this subject. And at the end of the day, for any kind of educational institution, they're going to check you against those things to say, yeah, we've done a good job teaching this person or this person knows and understands the stuff. We're going to pass them, give them a the credit, give them a the distinction, whatever else it might be. So look early on at the assessments, the number of them, when they're due, the format they're due in, all those kind of things so you've got a, a good understanding. Personally, for reading the assessments early on, you'll have it in the back of your brain that you have to do something on, for example, uh, a marketing plan. And so you can start collecting data from that from day one, just in the back of your mind, looking for articles, or whatever else might be going on there as well. Okay, the other thing at the end of the subject outline usually is the uh, rules which you must abide by. And the biggest area, the two areas I suppose which students run into problems, one is they don't do what was asked of them in the subject outline, so look to see what was that. It might be about formatting uh, their hand-ins and their reports. And the second thing which is the really, really important thing in academic learning is plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you take somebody else's work and you don't attribute that that work came from somebody else. And when you combine a stack of plagiarism with no original work, you've got a failed assignment on your hands for sure. Um, so anything you take from any other source, even a personal communication with your boss at work about the structure of the business, then you need to attribute that to that person. And there's a number of different tools you can use within your word processing packages, etc., to help you do that so you don't fall foul of that particular law. Uh, the universities across Australia largely use a thing called turnitin.com where they submit assignments and there's thousands of these being submitted every day and Turnitin both records these assignments and checks the assignment that's submitted against assignments from around the world and it comes back with a very clear report about what matches, what doesn't matches, where these sources might have come from and so without trying academics can know a lot about where the material in an assignment came from and particularly if you're dealing with in business uh, writing, companies like Coca-Cola, 
um, Qantas, uh, British Airways, there's a lot of material in the global environment about those companies and lots of people are using it. So it's, it's nearly easily, e you easily get caught around plagiarism for those kind of companies. Uh, third point, which is other stuff that your uni supplies to help you with your way through the learning process. Um, key things that you'll need to know about there and you must get up to speed with is whatever learning platform they're using, Sakai, Blackboard, the use of electronic forums, wikis, um, recordings, um, blogs, all those kind of things. If they're available for your subject and the lecturer or the academic has put them in place, it's likely that they want you to use them and to participate and be seen to be participating. So make sure you A, you're able to connect to the internet to do those kind of things and at an appropriate speed to be able to leverage the kind of information that's available on those sources and B, again, be using those. You may not be confident enough to want to comment on those kind of things, but even in the background, academics are watching which students connect to be there and access resources and those kind of things. So make sure you get involved in the material that's on there for you. The second thing is the study guide. This is um, often a hard copy or an electronic booklet of readings, activities, um, uh, material threaded together and written by your academic, which will uh, aim to step you through the subject that you're stud studying. Again, it's often broken down on a week-by-week -week basis um, how you're supposed to be transitioning through the subject. So make sure you know what's in there and you read it. Uh, certainly in my experience, some of the study guides you'll get, you'll go, holy cow, they're massive, it's big, I cannot read all that in 13, 16 weeks, whatever else might be going on. Go back to your learning objectives of the subject, work out what are the key things you need to know, and then pick through the study guide, if you're time poor especially, to pick out the key things that you need to, to get out of that to make it happen. Um, any other resources which are made available by the university you should look at. Again, academic, academics do not make material available for their own enjoyment. They usually have got some underlying benefit to help you through the course. So vodcasts, podcasts, WebExes, go to meeting sessions, uh, residential workshops, all those kind of things are all to add value to your learning experience. Cool, number four. Uh, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to visit a library in a physical sense or more likely in an online sense. And one of the key drivers of universities and even private colleges in Australia today is publishing. Academics have to publish their research and their work into journals and students are expected to look at these highly prized um, peer-reviewed sources of information to find out what is the latest in marketing, economics, mathematics, whatever your particular area might be. And so go to your library homepage, look for the link to the electronic catalogues and look for the journals which represent the, the top peer-reviewed journals in your field of study and make sure, and I would suggest in every assignment you do, at a most basic level, you need two or three or four articles from journals to complement other pieces you might use like textbooks and uh, maybe current media sources, newspaper articles, etc. to put an assignment together and to, to, to prove your research and highlight your research capability for your assignment. The second one is Google Academic, and Google has a separate screen. If you click on the More button up in the top left-hand corner, you'll find there's an academic profile. Every day there's more and more academic journal-based articles available in that um, media, and you use them. Again, it's simple as academic, Google Academic, and then um, straight into search for a strand about you know, economics in a global financial crisis, for example, and you'll get a, a bunch of hits straight off the bat to do it. They are extremely credible sources usually, and they are far better than my third point here, which is things like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is probably growing in um, credibility in some cases. Certainly in academic circles, it's not highly regarded at this stage in every circle for sure. And then things like Business Dictionary are unreviewed, people's you know vague concepts of what ideas might be. So be very careful about other online sources you use to get information for your uh, submission.